Prince. I'm going to keep reading The Little Prince today. Now we're going to do chapters 3 and 4. It took me a long time to understand where he, was, where he came from. The little prince, who asked me so many questions, never seemed to hear the ones I asked him. It was things he said quite at random that, bit by bit, explained everything. For instance, when he first caught sight of my airplane, I won't draw my airplane, that would be too much and too complicated for me. He asked, what's that thing over there? It's not a thing. It flies. It's an airplane. It's my airplane. I was proud to tell them that I could fly. Then he exclaimed, what? You fell out of the sky? Yes, I said modestly. Oh, that's funny. And the little prince broke into a lovely peal of laughter, which annoyed me a good deal. I like my misfortune to be taken seriously. Then he added, so you fell out of the sky too. What planet are you from? That's when I had the first clue to the mystery of his presence, and I questioned him sharply. Do you come from another planet? But he made no answer. He shook his head a little, still staring at my airplane. Of course, that couldn't have brought you from very far. And he fell into a revere that lasted a long while. Then, taking my sheep out of his pocket, he plunged into contemplation of his treasure. You can imagine how intrigued I was by the hint about other planets. I tried to learn more. Where do you come from, little fellow? Where is where I live of yours? And where will you be taking my sheep? After a thoughtful silence, he answered, the good thing about the crate you've given me is that I can use it for a house, that he can use it for a house after dark. Of course, and if you're good, I'll give you a rope to tie him up during the day and a stake to tie him to. This proposition seemed to shock the little prince. Tie him up? What a funny idea. But if you don't tie him up, he'll wander off somewhere and get lost. My friend burst, burst out laughing again. Where would he go? Anywhere. Straight ahead? Then the little prince remarked quite seriously. Even if he did, everything's so small where I live. And he added, perhaps a little sadly, straight ahead? You can't go very far. Chapter 4. That was how I learned a second very important thing, which was that the planet he had come from was hardly bigger than a house. That couldn't surprise me much. I knew very well that, except for huge planets like Earth, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, which have been given names, there are hundreds of others that are sometimes so small that it's very difficult to see them through a telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of them, he gives it a number instead of a name. For instance, he would call it Asteroid 325. I have a serious reason to believe that the planet the Little Prince came from is Asteroid B612. This asteroid has been sighted only once by telescope in 1909 by a Turkish astronomer, who then made a formal demonstration of his discovery in an international astronomical congress but no one had believed him on the account of the way he was dressed. Grown-ups are like that. Fortunately for the reputation of Asteroid B612, a Turkish director ordered his people, on pain of death, to wear European clothes. The astronomer repeated his demonstration in 1920 wearing a very elegant suit, and this time everyone believed him. If I've told you these details about asteroid B612, and I've given you this number. It's a count of the grown-ups. Grown-ups like numbers. When you tell them about a new friend, they ask questions that, about what really matters. They never ask questions about what really matters. They never ask, what does his voice sound like? What games does he like best? Does he collect butterflies? 
They ask, how old is he? They ask, how many brothers does he have? They ask, how much does he weigh? How much money does his father make? Only then do they think they know him. If you tell the grown-ups, I saw a beautiful brick house with geraniums at the window and doves on the roof, they won't be able to imagine such a house. You have to tell them, I saw a house worth 100,000 francs. Then they'll exclaim, oh, what a pretty house. So if you tell them, the proof of the little prince planet is that it was delightful and that the little prince himself is delightful and that he laughed and that he wanted a sheep. When someone wants a sheep, that proves that they exist. They'll shrug their shoulders. They'll treat you like a child. But if you tell them the planet he came from is asteroid B612, they'll be convinced and they won't bother you with their questions. That's the way they are. You must not hold it against them. Children should be very understanding of grown-ups. But of course, those of us who understand life couldn't care less about numbers. I should have liked to begin this story like a fairy tale. I should have liked to say, once upon a time there was a little prince who lived on a planet hardly any bigger than he was and who needed a friend. For those who understand life, that would sound much truer. The fact is, I don't want my book to be taken lightly. Telling these memories is so painful to me. It's already been six years since my friend went away, taking his sheep with him. If I try to describe him here, it's so I won't forget him. It's sad to forget a friend. Not everyone has a friend. And I might come to be like the grown-ups who are no longer interested in anything but numbers. Which is another reason why I've brought a box of paints and some pencils. It's hard to go back to drawing. At my age, when you've never made any attempts since the bow constrictor inside and out at the age of six. I certainly try to make my portraits as true as possible, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of succeeding. One drawing works, and the next no longer bears any resemblance, and I'm a little off his height too. My friend never explained anything. Perhaps he thought I was like himself, but I unfortunately cannot see a sheep through the sides of a crate. I may be a little like the grown-ups, I must have grown old. I'm going to go back to the astronomer that discovered the planet. At first, he was in Turkish clothes, and no one took him seriously. But then, he was dressed more traditionally, more European, and people finally took him seriously. Sometimes it depends on how you present yourself to the grown-ups. <sighs> I love reading this story to you guys. I hope you enjoyed chapters 3 and 4, and tomorrow we will do 5 and 6. Bye, friends.